Hello, I'm Ralph Monroe, and today TVW is going to bring you something very, very special. This is the historic Bigelow family home here in the state capital of Olympia, Washington, constructed before the Civil War and the administration of President Abraham Lincoln. It's perhaps the oldest home in the state of Washington, still occupied by the same family. Daniel Bigelow was a Harvard Law graduate, originally from New York, and made his way west on a wagon train in 1851. He came to Olympia via Astoria and arrived quite seasick, but determined to open a law practice here in this community that would become our state capital. He was quite a man, married a local girl, and came on the hillside across the bay from the capital to build this home. Marianne Bigelow married one of the grandchildren of Daniel Bigelow, another Daniel Bigelow, and she's lived her entire life, married life, here in this home. 69 years you and Dan have been married. What a wonderful house of love. She's raised her children, being named the State Mother of the Year, served as a leader in the First United Methodist Church here in Olympia, and remains today a symbol for mothers all across our state of the success and achievements motherhood can bring. She's a fabulous lady. Twice in the last 25 years, local citizens have rallied to preserve and save the Bigelow House, naming it a state historic landmark, a national landmark, and then finally raising the necessary funds to actually preserve and purchase the home so that when the Bigelow family is gone, this house will be left in their memory for the people of Washington State. This house is supposedly uh, the oldest house in the Northwest. And I believe it, I believe it. There were about 300 people in this part of the country when Grandfather Bigelow came. Uh, no cohesion, nothing at all. Well, here comes a young lawyer, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and the things began to change, and he got here uh, in 1852 or three, and thought, well, now I'll get this place organized. He was a little man. He was, and little men, you know, are, are more likable than most, beg your pardon, because they have to be. They have to be polite and all this. When Daniel Bigelow rode his boat across the bay, here to the east side of the harbor to build this beautiful home. He wanted to create something special. I'm sure in those days, most of the homes in Olympia would just be shacks and structures that didn't have any elegance or dignity. This beautiful Carpenter Gothic home was his creation, and it still stands today as a monument to the success of this community. The house on the outside is the way it was and it's covered with a layer of straight grain fur. And when we had the carpets up, I could see one right here, one knot hole. And I think of that in comparison with one of my kids' houses. It's got knot holes just everywhere. I'm afraid to go upstairs. But uh, they had their choice of wood. and. That's the thing you see on the outside. It's, it's the original wood, and it dried and dried and dried, and you can't put a nail in it because it bounces right out. This old shed actually dates back to before the construction of the Bigelow House. No one's really sure exactly how old it is. Its walls are adorned with carvings done by Mary Ann. Throughout the house, you see these beautiful wood carvings that were created by her during the evening hours as they sat around the fire. Some of the flowers, roses, and shrubs, bulbs here in the yard date back over a hundred years. Every year, the Bigelow House Association digs up some bulbs and sells these cherished items around town 
to make a little extra money to preserve the home and its surroundings. It's beautiful in the fall of the year. What did people do before electric lights, television, and radio? Well, in the long evening hours, they sat around the fire. They carved on wood carvings. They played games. Musical instruments were always a principal part of the house. You see, this house is adorned with dulcimers and guitars and a wide variety of musical instruments. Came from a field outside Yakima. And B. Manier, who was a lawyer, found it and gave it to me instead of a corsage at a banquet where I talked. And it didn't fit as well but as some other things like a corsage, but I adore this. And I tell kids, listen to that, listen to that. The wood in this is over 100 years old. You're hearing noises that people heard 100 years ago. The house is virtually filled with musical instruments, guitars, dulcimers, banjos, organs, but the most famous of all is the Steinway Square Grand Piano purchased for the outrageous sum of $800 in 1870. I suppose today it's worth a fortune. The Bigelow family was active throughout this entire community. One of the most cherished artifacts in the house are the family Bibles, the hymnals, and some of the early pieces from the First United Methodist Church. Daniel Bigelow, the grandson who now lives in this home, sung in the choir at First United Methodist for more than 60 years, and Marianne's artwork adorns the entire building. Today, children are used to a multitude of toys and computers and a wide variety of things, but in the 1870s, 1880s, the most cherished item that a youngster could have was a beautiful doll. This house is still adorned with a number of dolls from that era. I like souvenirs. I'm a child at heart. The house is filled with not only musical instruments and games and toys, but also some serious parts of Americana. The deeds of land signed by four different presidents of the United States hang on the wall. We see the shotgun that was carried west for protection, and we know of the threat that existed here in the American frontier. Perhaps one of the most notable people to come to this home was Susan B. Anthony in her campaigns for suffrage and making sure that women had the right to vote. They say that she sat in the chair here in this living room and rallied others to her cause. They used to meet here in this house. That was the area that they would kind of home in on and they would keep it for them. As you can see, this house has been filled with love for more than 150 years. And we're very lucky, too, as citizens of the state of Washington, to have the Bigelow House and many other historic structures like this one across our state. Thank you for joining us on TVW today. We appreciate you.